Hello everyone and welcome. Today I'm having Nina Wakanma, Chief Web Advocate of the World Wide Web Foundation. So this week we're talking about digital inclusion and meaningful connectivity. In today's world, internet access and connectivity are essential for people to interact, to learn and study, but also get informed, work and even defend their own rights regardless of where they are. The pandemic has been a reminder of how dependent we are to a stable and fast connection to live our everyday lives. Unfortunately, as you know, too many parts of the world still lack access to meaningful connectivity. We wanted to know more, so we called our friend Nina. Hello, Nina. How are you? It's good to see you again. And uh, where are you joining us from? Hello, bonjour. Good day from Abidjan, the most beautiful city in West Africa. <laughs> right. I, I just came back from Africa this morning. I was in Dakar, but I can tell you there's slight temperature difference. But anyway, oh, yeah. Nina, we don't have it's good to here. We don't have winter here with summer all year round. <laughs> you so you're welcome anytime. Yes, uh, you guys are so lucky. Right, Nena, it's, uh, it's great to connect and today we're going to speak about uh, a, a very critical topic which is digital inclusion and uh, this, this is a topic that you've been, you know, you've been wo working on it for some time now. Probably could you tell us uh, what's the difference between meaningful connectivity and what we mean, you know, like people know regular internet access, so what, what is meaningful mm -hmm. connectivity? Uh, now, I can speak about this for two days, so you have to stop me. Um, to put it in perspective, <laughs> this month, the ITU, the International Telecommunications Union, uh, put out the figures saying that of the uh, 7.8 billion that we are, about 5 billion are online, are considered online, and the other are not. But to be considered online, it means that you've connected once in the past three months. So if someone has only connected once this year, that person is counted as being online. That is catastrophic for someone like me. To put it mm -hmm. in a simpler way, meaningful connectivity is what allows me to be speaking to you in Paris while I'm seated in Abidjan. It means that I can connect every day it means that I have the right device. I'm actually speaking on my phone as I speak to you. So it's a smartphone. It means that I have good internet connection, which means uh, that I have broadband at home. And it also means that I have fast internet connection, which is at least 4G. Mm -hmm. So in, in, in a very simple way, meaningful internet connectivity is having the ability to connect daily on an appropriate device on broadband internet connectivity with 4G speed that allows me to be digitally competitive and digitally able. Yeah, for some people, this might sound quite, you know, easy and natural, but probably I think uh, it's important to point out who are those who are mostly impacted by the lack of meaningful connectivity. Now, that's a good thing. Um, everyone knows about, uh, about Rwanda, um, but we, we now see uh, in Rwanda, in nine other countries where we understudied for our meaningful connectivity um, report that just got launched, women are 21% less meaningfully connected in the first place, and rural people are less connected. For instance, in Rwanda, 25%, 25 to 26% is the, is the gap between uh, city connection, let me not use urban, but people in the city and people in the rural areas. So those two groups are the ones that I'd like to mention now, women and people who live in rural areas. Now, overall in the mm -hmm. world, you can talk about least developed countries, you can talk about African countries, um, in West Africa, because this is where I live, mm -hmm. it's 32 percent of uh, all the population, which is about 350 million, that is offline, not connected at all. So we, we are going from people who are totally offline, people who are basically mm -hmm. connected, 
to people who are meaningfully connected. So meaningful connectivity is the ideal, but then we don't have it at the moment. Right. So um, what can we do, you know, to advance this topic, you know, to move further, to raise the bar in the right direction and providing meaningful connectivity to all? You know, um, uh, for those who are listening to us, um, I, I believe that most of us have lived through this pandemic or are still living through the pandemic. Uh, there's something that I've noticed. Uh, when the pandemic struck, we came together as humanity. Um, whether we are uh, in policy, or whether we are in research, whether we're in the medical field, we are like, this is humanity at risk. The rate at which we pushed for new vaccines, the rate at which we, we vaccinated ourselves against this pandemic, I think that if we really want to get us connected, we can do it. Mm -hmm. So my first thing would be to recognize that connectivity to meaningful internet, that uh, access to uh, a meaningful internet connectivity should be recognized as a basic right. It, the, the same way we recognize life, health, education as a human right. Maybe that's going to help us. And, and this is something that the Web Foundation and our partners have been speaking about. So first is recognize that this is a right because a, a connectivity to the internet kind of underlines every other developmental aspect of our lives, whether it is trading, whether it is education, whether it is banking, whether it is governance, broadcasting, um, anything we do these days is either wholly or partially driven by internet connectivity. And that is why step one for us would be to recognize this as a, a right. Many countries have done so, but as a, a global community, we haven't done so. The second is more investment. Um, I think that mm -hmm. our figure is about $400 billion to invest in, in internet connectivity, which is less than one year's um, a, a defense budget of the US. So first is recognizing that it is a right. Second is right. investing. The third, and maybe the most important, is capacity, skills to be able to use this connectivity to better our lives. So that is our, our vision, either as Web Foundation or as the Alliance for Affordable Internet. It is because when we are socially mm -hmm. connected, when we are actively connected, like our research shows, um, that 12% of those who are connected, are meaningfully connected, are more active online, and 13% are right. more politically aware. So if we're looking for citizens that can take care of themselves, we're looking for citizens that can produce, we're looking for citizens that are aware, we're looking for citizens that can contribute better to uh, our sustainable development goals. And we believe that uh, connecting everyone is part of the effort. So, N Nena, you, you just mentioned contribution. So how can, you know, just for the audience watching us, if you, you know, you wish to give like some kind of advice, how can we do our part? How can we contribute just to give more, you know, meaningful connectivity and help other people who are not connected properly to have access to it? Right. If, if we want to come back to the four, four um, thresholds of connectivity, we talked about being connected every day. Can people connect every day if they don't have electricity? Electricity is one of the infrastructural basics for people to connect. So electricity is one of those. We talked about device, device access to the, the, the right device. Taxation and price of devices is one of the things that we need to work on. We talked about broadband connectivity. That means investing and stretching the fiber. I mean, mostly these days we are looking at either um, mobile phone connectivity or fiber to the home. So that's where we need investment. And of course, we talked about uh, and 4G is... at least, 4G speed and mm -hmm. skills. So let's educate, let's invest, let's have the infrastructure right, and let's have the right policies. Because taxation policies, we, we don't talk about them much. But one other thing, if you allow me, because you are in the media, how often 
can we live with shutdowns, internet shutdowns? So when we have invested, when we have trained ourselves, and now for one reason or the other, a government decides to mm -hmm. shut down the internet for one, I don't know what, this is Yeah, for us now, our industry is impossible. Yeah, yes. ob obviously. Mm -hmm. So this is this is also the problem, Nana. It's uh, it's uh, in your job. What do you see? What is uh, what do you see? Do do you see that there has been progress in 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 this field when it comes to women, or are we still lagging behind? Um, I think we are worse off than we were two years ago. Let me explain. Mm -hmm. uh, take it easy with me. So before the pandemic, our figures showed that women were twenty one percent less connected than men across the world. And when we come down to Africa and in places where people are even less connected, the figure grows. And now comes the pandemic. And what did we tell people? Start working from home, uh, start schooling from home, start doing anything uh, online. And the work of women, the work of home care, the work of motherhood fell automatically on women. So the women who were struggling to keep things together now have to work from home without much internet connectivity and have to take care of the kids and become teachers. Mm -hmm. So the work pressure on women has increased. But then the funny thing is that uh, in the report just presented the, uh, last week, uh, the price of broadband in the global south has actually increased. It's increased about 0 0.2 per gigabyte. And I think that Togo in West Africa has about the, one of the highest um, connectivity rates, uh, connectivity prices, mm -hmm. which is about $8.6 per gigabyte. Where will an, a Togolese woman get that money from? Someone who works for about $50 a month. Uh, so unless we have specific um, gender targeted initiatives to skill these women, to, to give them the right, the right devices and to connect them, we will not reach our goals. So th this is really close to my heart because as mm -hmm. an African I can hear woman that. in the digital world, I cannot not speak about this. We are still in March. So please permit me to drive home the message that African women need to be connected to be empowered. Absolutely. Absolutely, Nena. I'm always very excited to speak to you with lot. You have so much energy and enthusiasm, and I hope that your message will be heard. Thank you again for sharing, you know, some of your time with us. It's always a pleasure. You know, you are most welcome uh, in June at Vivatech in Paris. So it's, it's, it's home to you. You can come anytime you want. Thank you very Thank much. You. Cheers. Well, thank you, Nina, for this wonderful conversation. And don't leave us yet. We still have a few questions for you in the speakeasy. Well, if you liked uh, this video and you don't want to miss the next ones, please make sure to subscribe to our channel. The link is appearing on your screen. Time flies, folks. It's already time to say goodbye. Hope you enjoyed it. Stay with us to listen to Nina answers in the speakeasy. Thank you for being here and I'll see you next week. Bye bye. My, my phone, my Huawei phone. <laughs> I've been remote working for some 20 years now. Night owl, night owl. Kamala Harris. Making access to the internet a basic right. Get all the education you can while you can and never stop. Drink. I don't drive. I'm an eco-citizen. I don't own a car at the moment here, so I don't care about driving. <laughs> Drink lots of water, sorry. Let me, let me qualify that. Drink lots of water. Kamala Harris. Yeah. Oh, Abidjan, anytime, any day. Come on now. <laughs> None of the above. I prefer my mother tongue, but I wake up in French. <laughs>